Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are now talking about Hurricane Isaias which reached hurricane status as of last night while everybody was sleeping and this storm looks to pack a punch for a lot of areas. It has reached hurricane status, first off unexpectedly, second off much earlier than was it, what was originally even anticipated to be possible. So this storm is surprising in a lot of different ways. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this hurricane will become a category 2 or what, what category do you think this one will reach at its maximum peak? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now I have a very, very exciting announcement to make for you guys. If you become a patron, silver patron or above, you will gain access as of right now to our second winter forecast before anybody else in the world gets to see it. So I highly recommend you do that if you are curious about what our second winter forecast will look like. I have just released that to our Patreon page. Again, silver patron and above. An official patron will not gain access to that as they usually only get model guidance, things like that. But if you join today, you can get access to our second winter forecast. Again, silver patron or above. So I highly recommend you check that out in the pinned comment down below and the description. All right, now let's briefly take a look at our satellite imagery for our storm here. It, as you can see, it does not look like a hurricane. It is interacting with a lot of shear and a lot of dry air right now. As I mentioned, it would when it's over the Bahamas, but it is going to reach some more favorable regions soon. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at our low pressure center. NOAA's official, official forecast for this one. We're going to look at some spaghetti models, intensity guidance, rainfall forecast, uh, and other tropical things like that. All right, now here is where that low pressure center is located. As you can see, it is north of Cuba, uh, and it's heading generally towards Freeport, Bahamas, uh, areas offshore of Florida to the east coast of Florida, where it might even skirt along Florida there and bring some pretty major impacts there for Florida. So if you are a viewer from Florida, I would recommend that you do uh, wait until we start talking about the impacts for Hurricane Isaias. All right, now Carolinas, Virginia, Delmarva, New Jersey, and New England could all feel very major impacts as well from this one. I'll talk about all of that throughout this video, obviously. Now, here is the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast for Hurricane Isaias. And as you can see, uh, this one is heading generally in a northwesterly direction. It's going to come very close to Florida, might even come on shore of Florida, but if not, just offshore, most likely. And it's going to kind of curve northward, almost directly northward, and then northeastward eventually, uh, where I think it's probably going to hit the Outer Banks. That seems like the very middle of our cone forecast here, and that seems like the most likely outcome for Hurricane Isaias. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance. We're going to take a look at our general spaghetti model guidance, our GEFS model ensemble guidance, and our Canadian model ensemble guidance. All right, now here's what our spaghetti models look like as of this morning. And as you can see, uh, generally this one is going to come pretty close to the Florida coast. There is two that have it hitting Florida there. I think it's going to stay just offshore, and that's going to be happening within the next 48 hours. Now it's going to kind of curve northward and then northeastward after that point and almost certainly come on shore of North Carolina, impact southeastern Virginia, which is actually where I'm located there. I actually do have something set up where if this one does hit southeastern Virginia, I am going to go to the beach and I am going to film this one and pretty much chase it. I have a friend that lives right on the beach, basically. That is my plan if it does hit here uh, to get footage for you guys. So that would be very exciting, obviously. Uh, a little dangerous, but, you know, it's something I've always kind of done with weather events. So uh, it's not out of my comfort zone at all. Uh, so that would be very exciting to do for you guys. I think it would be a very different type of video. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the GEFS model. And this one has it coming well on shore of Florida on average, also hitting in between South Carolina and North Carolina. Those members that have it hitting Florida directly obviously do not have this one intensifying nearly as much as the ones that keep it offshore do. Those ones have it reaching South Carolina and North Carolina as a much lower low pressure, si low pressure system and then kind of skirting along the East Coast there. And that seems like actually the most popular option for a lot of models. Here's our Canadian ensemble model and this one's just all over the place still. So I'm just not really, I don't have much faith in this one as of right now, but there is a lot of members there that do keep this one offshore of the East Coast of Florida and then hitting North Carolina, kind of like what most of our other models have shown, but there's some other members that just go absolutely crazy and show some outlandish things that do not seem like a really uh, likely option at this point. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the intensity guidance, and then we're going to start getting into impacts, total rainfall, uh, the winds you could expect along the eastern seaboard. And then we're going to start talking about our two other invests that we have developing in the Atlantic that could become our next tropical systems. We're going to get into our official direct weather forecast after that, and then some other things. All right, now here is our intensity guidance. As you can see, most of these models actually have it dropping away from hurricane status very soon back into strong tropical storm status. And then in about, I would say four days from now, they have it pretty much dropping off, probably because of a lot of land impact there. These models have been all over the place and honestly, the National Hurricane Center thinks this one will be, remain a hurricane throughout most of its lifetime. Uh, I'm pretty 50-50 on it. I think we could drop back into uh, tropical storm status at times, maybe back up into hurricane status. But there is some models that have flirted with category two status being possible as well. So we really need to watch a lot of that closely. Now, here's the total rainfall we're expecting. As you can see, anywhere in anywhere below the pinks, so blues and greens, you're at under an inch of rain, which would be considered minor amounts of rain. If you're in the pinks to purples, you're at about one to two inches of rain. If you're in the reds, you're at two to four inches of rain. And if you're in those gold shades, which I see a lot of for Florida, the Carolinas, Virginia, Delmarva, and New Jersey, you are at four inches of rain plus. So this is going to be a massive rainmaker. Uh, it appears at this point for the areas closest to where it will track, obviously. So we're really, really going to want to watch that closely because that could have some very major implications. All right, now let's go ahead and look at our GFS model and just take a look at some of the impacts. As you can see, by time we're at about Sunday morning at about 2 a.m. here, we are taking a look at some of those yellows and oranges moving onshore to the east coast of Florida. And what that's going to be is anywhere from about 28 to 40 knot winds. If any of those purples make it onshore, that's 50 knot winds plus. So we're probably going to get at least tropical storm status conditions along the Florida coast. If it's further away, maybe not. If it's closer, you can expect even worse impacts, but it's also possible we see hurricane impacts, uh, hurricane status winds to Florida. And then we see it move generally northward towards the borders of the two Carolinas there, where we see those 30 to 50 knot winds move onshore of those regions. Then it moves in a northeasterly direction from that point, and it's located over the Chesapeake Bay by the time we're at about 2 a.m. on Tuesday which would bring tropical storm status winds pretty much for all of eastern Virginia, the Delmarva, eastern North Carolina, areas like that, potentially hurricane status. This model seems like the outlier to have it that far inland. So if it's offshore, we could expect more major impacts along the eastern seaboard. Let's just go ahead and take it to about 8 a.m. on Tuesday. And as you can see, it's going to be along the Jersey Shore there bringing tropical storm or hurricane status winds. And then by the time we reach Tuesday afternoon, it's going to bring tropical storm or hurricane status conditions to New England. I think the GFS right now has an absolute worst case scenario because it skirts along the entire eastern seaboard and it stays over water so it's not dropping off in intensity. It's just bringing these bad conditions on shore the whole way up and that'd be an absolute worst case scenario. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and then our official direct weather forecast for Hurricane Isaias, and then we're going to get into our comment of the day. All right, now here we are taking a look at our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here from NOAA. Now, first off, obviously we have our hurricane, but as you can see, there is two other disturbances there. One looks like it's probably going to head more towards Bermuda and uh, maybe develop, maybe not, but really... Uh, it has a low chance that as of this point. And now we have another tropical wave moving offshore of Africa now too. So we have two separate systems outside of East IS to track, which is very, very interesting. But as of the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, our one that is further west has 0% chance and the one offshore of Africa has 20% chance. So chances remain quite low for these storms to develop. All right, now here's our hurricane East IS official next five day forecast and as you can see i'm expecting it to move generally in a northeasterly direction there i made this first thing this morning so it's a little outdated but it is going to head in a generally northwesterly direction possibly skirt the east coast of florida i do have an, a direct florida impact 
if the low pressure system coming onshore possible at this point, but it's more likely it'll be offshore. And then likely it's going to curve up north and then northeasterly, uh, where it's going to probably make impacts with North Carolina somewhere, most likely the Outer Banks, and then stay offshore of the East Coast from that point, maybe skirting just along the coast as it heads towards Long Island and New England. I think that's the most likely outcome at this point. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, um, what, what state do you think will feel the most impact from this one? And everything weather said North Carolina. And at this point, it does appear that North Carolina would see the most impact from this one. So that was a really good comment. And now for our patron highlight, I'm going to be doing this at the end of every single video. A shout out to each of our patrons who is silver tier and above. Weather Guy, Illinois, uh, Shraggy Stern, and Michael J. Rahili. I think that's how you say your name. Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and becoming patrons. Again, if you want to become a patron, you can join by taking a look at the pinned comment and our description where you can find our patron Patreon link and you can join today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.